Let's do this. Hey everybody, this is Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man. And if you want to get your money's worth, stay right here because you're listening to Knockouts and Three Counts. And remember, everybody's got a price, Million Dollar Man. <laughs> This is Don West here, and I'm telling you, Knockouts and Three Counts is the podcast, baby! Make sure that's the one you check out, because, buddy, like me, they're the real deal, baby! This is Jake the Snake Roberts. Just let me know. You need to listen to Knockouts and Three Counts, or you'll see that damn snake again. This is the Ring of Honor World Television Champion, a.k.a. Shane T, boy. The baddest champion you've ever seen, boy. And you're listening to Knockouts and Three Counts. What up, everybody? This is Kyle, and you are back watching Knockouts and Three Counts. And like we told you, we've got a great guest tonight. And before we get started and get to our special guest, Corey, throw your social media out real quick. Let everybody know where they can find you. Uh, only thing I use, as always, Fight Fan from the 313 on Twitter. Let's get to it. And without any further ado, for the first time on the video, third time on the show, we've got the monster himself, the French-Canadian Frankenstein PCO. How you doing, brother man? Great. What about you guys? Hey, man, we just uh, had quite the rainstorm. I don't know if you guys got it up there in uh, Canada. but uh, bit. Not too much. Just a bit. Yeah, man, it got, like, like all stupid and great. Kind of looked like you were about to make your entrance here in Michigan and stuff, man. <laughs> yeah yeah well Doing before great. we get started man let everybody know where they can find you and all that good stuff uh me yep yeah uh, uh pretty much everything at pco is not human on twitter instagram uh, facebook and uh on uh, youtube as um pierre carwell at pco well, it's been a little minute since we've had you on. The last time we had you on the show was in February, and clearly things have changed quite a bit since uh, the last time yeah. we had you on. So first of all, how the hell have you been ha uh, holding up, and what the hell does a friggin' Frankenstein do in quarantine, man? <laughs> man, I've never been so busy in my life. I've been, like, busier than ever. Like, uh, I've got all kinds of projects going on, and uh, – we're shooting a lot of episodes of uh, Monday Night PCO and Destro PCO Justice, and um, that that keeps me busy quite a lot with uh, all the trainings and just you know staying ready uh, for when we return to action. And uh, there's so many things going on. Like uh, I've, I've, I've trained my hands like I never trained my trained my hands. From I'm learning a lot and. Uh, now, are you and, saying you're uh, doing boxing when you say that? You said you're training your hands. Are you doing boxing? No, just a strength, a grip for the strength. strength. You know, we, we, we tend to forget that our hands, we're using our hands to do, like, everything. And there's, like, small tendons and ligaments that we don't think it can make a difference, but it's, uh, it's, it's weird the way it works. So I've been, uh, I've been having, a, you know, quite some success with uh with the strength uh on my hands and uh i don't know it's uh it's fun like uh, i can you know arm wrestle a little bit and things like that so it's, it's just uh i'm just learning other things but it's just uh it's just an addition to everything that, that it's always wrestling wrestling first but uh everything's interconnected for you know just to, just to be uh, more ready than ever so I totally can relate with that because on the jujitsu end of things, with all the grip strength you get from grabbing the gi and trying oh, yeah. to grab a hold of somebody, it's crazy, man. Like you don't realize how much you use it until you're using something that you have to use your grip for. So yeah, yeah. I definitely can relate and definitely can see how in your line of work that that would be um, that would be essential. So let me ask you about that. That's another thing. You know, you've kept up with the Monday Night PCO and Destro. Uh, videos which we've shared out off of our Twitter, which you can find us at KO3C Pod. Yeah. You know, we've every week, you know, he tags us in and we retweet it out for you. So, with you having more time on your hands, you know, at least with not being able to wrestle and things, 
How has that made it for you to create your content? I mean, that's the main way you've been able to keep yourself out there with Ring of Honor not yeah. being able to wrestle. So what, tell me a little bit about that. Well, it's a lot of uh, planning, a lot of, uh, you know, just, you know, creation. Like, uh, it's crazy. It's, it's very demanding, but it's, all, it's also very rewarding. So uh, it kind of, the payoff goes with all the work. So it's kind of cool. Uh, but it's a lot, you know, just shooting like uh, every week. So we, we shoot every other week. We shoot for two weeks at a time. And just to cut everything and just to uh, produce uh, the whole, you know, episode of two minute, two minutes and twenty seconds, um, gotta go to a lot of uh, <laughs> grinding and a lot of work, uh, back and forth. Uh, you know, we're uh, we're I'm editing with another guy um, from the industry movie and for the movie industries, and um, yeah, it's. Uh, it's very interesting. It's uh, it's it's cool. Very cool. I really enjoy it. I really like it. I feel like you're seeing that a lot with a lot of fighters and wrestlers and stuff like that that have their own following. You know, that's kind of their way of staying active right now with everything going on is they're just focusing on their own content and, you know, producing the best stuff they can. And a lot of the stuff you're putting out seems to be, you know, honestly good quality. It makes me laugh when I watch it, you know. <laughs> yeah, that, that, you know, trying to entertain, you know, as far as, you know, Getting a good pop of laughing and some good uh, gore style sometimes. It's even funny, you know, like uh, we take it seriously. But, you know, when you watch that, it could be like, uh, you know, it's so the exact, I'm tired of it, but it's so exaggerated <laughs> that uh, you can, you know, you can laugh about it because sometimes it's like having like the double like sledgehammer into the head and, you know, it's just uh, Super, uh, you know, way the when you're uh, you're facing PCO justice, the price that you're paying, your you know your uh, the fact that you're crooked, or whatever, or you're doing something wrong, there's a high high price to pay for that. Mm -hmm. Like I said in that promo you had us cut, man, the monster mania, it's running yeah. through you just like yeah. it's this here on this shirt. Yeah. So my next question for you is obviously you had your run at the end of last year with the ring of honor world title. Um, as we come out of, you know, the pandemic and ring of honor starts to make its return to TV. Um, are we going to be seeing you focus more on a singles run, you know, trying to get your title back? Are we going to see you and Brody King tagged up? What's uh, what's on the agenda for PCO as ring of honor returns to TV. It's weird that you asked me that, like, because like, when I saw Brody cut his promo that he was now a single and he was sick of being in a enterprise or whatever, <laughs> whatever the promo was, you probably saw it, right? Like the big right. promo that he cut just before he participated in the uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling Tournament. Uh, not too long ago, we just cut that promo and I've watched it like everyone else. And I've learned it there that, okay, that's, that's the thing now. So, uh, I guess you know it's going to be mostly a single run. I would say. <laughs> I, How do you I feel didn't... about that. I mean, you've been with Villain Enterprises for the majority of the time we've seen you over in Ring of Honor. I mean, now you're back on your own. Clearly, you can do your thing, winning the world title. I mean, what are your thoughts on being a single again? Yeah, I'd love to. I mean, I I've had a great time with uh, Villain Enterprises. You know, I mean, uh, I always got along with those guys and they were like good friends of mine and I was really comfortable being in that that faction but if I have to be single but you know if the this doesn't exist anymore um well I think you know the monster was always like doing his own thing being part of that faction anyways I was always like kind of different right so then like you said you know I had like um uh, the run with the the world title and uh it's it's always for me it's always like the, the goal it's um just to have like the best uh our shows possible and the draw you know an awesome big gate and uh a lot of people and uh yeah well hopefully it's gonna happen organically uh with the right opponent at the right time at the right place and uh 
something huge will will uh, will come out out of that all that uh, you know kind of tough time and for everyone for every uh, business in general like not just the wrestling business it's been like pretty tough on a lot of people and uh, yeah so I think when everybody will be like ready and feel like yeah, comfortable to go back to normal I think it's gonna it's going to be a great economy. It's going to be good for the business. I think we're going to have. I think so too. Cause it awesome creates, crowd. It yeah. creates a hungry crowd. Yeah, exactly. People will, uh, will be um, hungry for, for entertainment, for wrestling, for action, for new things to develop and things like that. So I think, uh, yeah, it will be an awesome, good time for the wrestling business again. Well, Corey had a good question leading into that. I kind of let him know a little bit about just how long you've been in the business and those who, you know, haven't checked out our past episodes, check them out up there in the right corner. I mean, you know, this guy's been around WWF, WCW, Ring of Honor now. He's been everywhere. But, Corey, you had a good question um, pertaining to that as we come out, come into this pandemic era. Well, I mean, as, you know, people that view the show regularly, uh, regularly know, I'm not, uh, I'm a self-professed no longer wrestling watcher. I am a fan of the characters that go into it, but to watch the actual productions is, I just, it's hard for me at this point. That being said though, when I was growing up, it was, you know, it was the go-to thing. I mean, it was the biggest thing in the world. And uh, kind of my question, I have twofold, but I'll let you answer, answer the first one. Um, what is it like seeing the wrestling world kind of go from the heights that it once was to kind of where it was not necessarily now, because now it's on a huge upswing where you're seeing a lot of the, what was smaller promotions just a couple of years ago, kind of getting their foothold. I mean, of course, Corona kind of put a stomping in yeah. on a lot of that, but before then, I mean, you were seeing a ton of these, you know, what were considered indie promotions, getting TV deals and stuff like that, and really working their way into becoming serious contender. Yeah. So, so you're asking me what's the difference between now, before and now? I yeah, think what he's like, trying to say with point? his question is – I think what he's trying to say with this question is with you being wrestling in so many different generations, what do you, what challenges do you see as we're in a, uh, like right now we're in a pandemic era. So we got no yeah. fans. You've wrestled in front of crowds that are huge. And now you've wrestled are going to wrestle in front of no fans. Oh, what has been the challenge for you to continue to elevate your character through all the different yeah. generations? Well, uh, the, the, yeah, it's kind of like, uh, like you like he said, and like you said, like uh, in the pandemic, it's totally a different, it's another business. It doesn't even compare to what it was before. I think for everybody, and we say, we see it with the ratings, ratings are down. Right. People are stuck at home and they don't even watch the show because you need a crowd. So that's for now. I, I mean, as far as it will be TVs and fake booze and fake yay or no crowd or whatever, it's really tough to know what's working, what's not working. You don't have the pulse of the crowd. You know, you need to have the pulse, you know, to to know if you're doing something right or wrong. You know, you can't just go with the, what, oh, the ratings weren't good, so we must do something wrong. No, the ratings are bad because there's no crowd. So we can't, nobody can get excited or whatever because you're just watching an NBA arena. So you can have the best wrestlers in the world, but if you don't have a crowd, and then it shows how important the crowd is to a wrestling show. It's more than 75% of the product, if you look at it. You know, it's uh, we tend to think that the superstars are the one who are making this this industry spins, but basically the fans are <laughs> as much as important as the top stars in the business. They're, they are the top stars altogether, you know? So... That's the thing that we have to uh, recognize. As far as, up, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, off of what you just said, that brings up a question in of itself. Like, with you guys starting your tapings and things, you know, you we keep seeing all the hashtags for the ROH bubble and all those things. So, first of all, what are your thoughts on ROH's plan to come back to TV? And what do you think, like, the biggest challenge, like – 
for you, do you feel like it's going to be a big challenge to you being more character based or do you feel like it's still going to project as well uh, through TV? It's, you know, that that's many aspects there. It depends the way that creative are going to handle this thing. I think I, I'll know like how I will handle it, but I, of course you can't, you can't play it the same thing. You can't do the same thing without a crowd than you do with a crowd. I mean, you have to just, just be different and just act differently because, you know, you're working mostly for the camera. Uh, even though like, you know, a lot of your big companies were always already doing that. They would acknowledge the crowd for tapings like WWE, you know, they would, but not that much, you know, they mm -hmm. would acknowledge more the camera. But I think uh, it just has to be at different uh, angles and things like that. The, the whole production's got to change. I think uh, it's just my personal take, though. But I, 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 it was it was it was good, like uh, the way they, they, they switched it with like uh, the TVs and things like that for WWE. But um, I think Ring of Honor were like, uh, what's the um, first concern is health first. So that's why the bubble and things like that. So we, I don't think we will have a crowd eventually. I think maybe probably December or maybe January. I don't think before that. Uh, so it will uh, be a, a huge challenge, like you said. But uh, depending on how I work things out with creative, we'll see how we're going to handle this. So it's, uh, it's, it's the unknown right now. It's totally the unknown. I feel like we're already kind of starting to see it. Um, there's, there seems to be a lot of promotions kind of moving to the states that are starting to allow, even if it's only like a 10% or a 25%. Like AEW just started the 10% capacity with Dynamite. Was it la uh, this week or last week or something like that? Was it on the beach? No, they, they're doing the one it on at the beach? Uh, Daly's place. Okay. Because I know, I know, like I've been contact, like others, uh, other companies have contacted me for so for shows in front of crowds. So let's say they they got a twenty five hundred uh, seats arena. They're they're sitting maybe five hundred or seven fifty, and with, yep. with people spread out. And uh, but at least we'll have you know they will you'll have, have the, somebody to know feedbacks. if it's getting over. Yeah, yeah exactly. And also, if you're stretching something too long or if you make it last too long, you start to lose the crowd and you have to adapt. You know, it's like... Uh, Without it's, a crowd, it's, it's hard to tell. Yeah, because the crowd's dictating a lot of the pace during that match, you know? The, the crowd's dictating a, a lot of things. Uh, you know, the way, the way that you will handle your comeback or the way that you will stretch out a, a spot or not. Or, you know, it dictates a lot of things. And... Now, you know, we have to much, pretty much less or more, we got to choreograph, you know, it's like basically it's a dance more than anything else. So yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, that's, that's the challenge there. You know? Well, that brings a question I have for you. So obviously, like we were talking about uh, your entrance at Madison Square Garden, you had one of the dopest entrances I've seen live. I remember I caught it on video and Marty put it in a story and all that good stuff. So with what we've seen during the pandemic with the cinematic matches, like uh, we got a question in the comments from our friend, Jimmy Mills, Jimmy asked, uh, Jimmy asked, what, um, what were your thoughts on the Boneyard match? And if you were ever asked to do something cinematic like that, when ring of honor comes back, what kind of flair do you think that you could bring to it? Cause with the PCO and Destro stuff like that, man, yeah. you're, you're, right up that alley so i mean i feel yeah. like that's right up your alley so first yeah. off, did you watch it second of all what are your thoughts yeah i've, I've watched it and i i, I uh, it was uh it was one of the best matches they did cinematic match uh and played out good uh everything so uh, i think i would go uh in a different way that they did though like i wouldn't play it the same way like i would How play so? it more like a yeah, like i do in my videos in my uh in my vignettes and uh yeah it would be something like totally uh you know out of the alley that you usually see you know i would like uh, really uh evolve and not evolve but uh but be be different and uh just 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 trace just trace it another uh, another path that, that that has never been seen on tv before 
you know, just, just, uh, just, just be uh, different, very much different. I think. Yeah, you've seen, you've seen like what, what we're doing. Like we got the style, the gore style a little bit, and we got like. Uh, I and I think at some point it's important to have it. You know, it's uh, it really details the character, define the character. And um, Taker couldn't have had a better opponent, too. With AJ? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He couldn't have had a better opponent for him to do that with. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, the thing is, like, they couldn't, like, I was expecting Taker and AJ to have, like, a solid match in a ring. But one day, put AJ in a cin cinematic, and they didn't have a long match, and we didn't see, like, any uh, athletic, uh, cap you know, abilities from AJ. Usually, you know, he was the perfect opponent to make Taker look great. Uh, you know, let's say for a, a real WrestleMania or something with crowd. You know, that would have right. been that would have been an awesome match, I'm sure. Uh, but we could they couldn't utilize like AJ skills that much. So uh, you know, when for me, I I said like uh, the choke slam or something, and he was already at the. Uh, down on the hill, yeah. down on the on the yep. hole, and uh, it's just so you didn't see the actual move. It's like okay, it happened. You know, he's there, right. you know, at the bottom of the hole, and um, and it's just things like that that they had to play with. But it was cool the look and everything, the symmetry and the coming out into its uh, old style of biker and things like that. So I think it, it was good. You know? Plus, I mean, um, it came out in that piece that they were doing on him, the last ride thing. They came out that under, Undertaker so it, specifically. Yeah, it connected. Yeah, yeah. And it helped uh, connect it. I, that was one thing, you know, I got to say, when that came out, my first thought was, well, damn, Taker's never really talked like that. And he just goes from no talking to just open the door <laughs> I'm like, all right, well, this, this, this is different. But when you hear that, I feel like it added an extra layer to it. Um, I think it was showing that he was going to – since they were going to show that huge documentary on him. So I think talking was making sense because he was going to talk for two, three hours anyways, so, which he never done before. So. Right. Yeah. I had actually seen him. So, uh, he came on the Pat McAfee show, actually. He was on there for like a, a 45 minute segment. Yeah. And it, it was interesting. Yeah, lately. And, and, yeah, I've seen him uh, left and right a little bit lately. But I, I mean, for a while, he was not like he was totally kayfabe for a while. Like he mm -hmm. would do like podcasts or anything like that. So I think that's if he's on a certain show, that's that's pretty new to me. I mean, like I said, I think it gives a different look, obviously, than what we're used to. Um, another thing I got to get your opinion on. So we were talking about it. You know, you mentioned, you know, Ring of Honor coming back to TV. Well, we've seen the debut of the Thunderdome. You've got the virtual experience yeah. with the fans <laughs> being able to be in like that. Have you seen some crazy stuff? That? And do you think it's something that can be viable going forward, at least until we can know uh, what's going on with the whole fan situation? I think it's better than an empty arena, but I don't. I don't think it's. I, I personally, I don't really like it. Uh, to me, you're on the screen. You, I can't hear you. Everybody's on right. mute. It, it That's looks like there's people. <laughs> it's like the cartoon, like people that you see for baseball. They have like a quarter of the uh, the stadium with people, and it's just like. Totally like uh, just cartoon, like caught off with painting on them. You know, it's just weird. <laughs> never every thought time, I would see that. It's in crazy my life. too because every time I see like an NBA game or anything like that with the fans on in the background, I just it's feel crazy like I'm too. Watching, I'm watching like the X, uh, like somebody playing on Xbox or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think NHL <laughs> the NHL are doing a good thing with the. That's how I would go instead. I would go like NHL style. I would go with the big giant screen, you know? I yeah. would put a lot of giant make 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 the character look bigger than ever they did. Like you have the Titan Tron, but I would like have like many around the area. That would be basically four walls with like the guy, like so I don't know, like maybe different different size, but huge screen 
of different size on all sides of the ring. I don't know, like in a way where when the camera pans out, uh, it looks larger than life. I think, I think hockey, they're doing that and it, it works out pretty, pretty well. So, but uh, we're not, we can't compare with the crowds. So that's yeah. right. That's just plan B. Well, that's plan B. Look- that's how I would go. You led right into a question I had for you. Obviously, you know, you're called the French-Canadian Frankenstein for a reason. Uh, we talked about hockey. What do you think about hockey right now? Who do you got? Have you been watching the playoffs at all? What do you think? I was watching until Montreal got, like, uh, kicked out by the Flyers. I was, I was watching it, and I was pretty impressed with the uh, the way that the guys they were going, you know. Like, I it was good caliber, good hockey. I thought it was going to be more boring than that. Uh, but you still have the effects that are good on hockey. Let's say a guy hit a slap shot and he hits the pin, you know, a post or something. It's still like uh, very, but you're missing the, oh, the crowd, like, you know, but it, it, still, it's, it still brings a lot of uh, suspense and things like that because the rules, you know, the half sides and things like that. So people can get excited on TV even though they don't have a, the crowd in the background, but I, I think it's not the same, but I think hockey are doing a great job with, with this handicap. Yeah. I think if anybody, hockey is definitely doing the best job. I mean, like at MLB games, they're using like cardboard cutouts and stuff. That's cardboard bad. doesn't work to me. Yeah, no, that, like... <laughs> that, that looks bad. I agree with you. I think that because you this... don't have the depth of the, of the, the cardboard. It's just, you know, <laughs> it's like these, I, but I, I completely agree with you. Like, I, I think the best bet, honestly, would be put maybe like a hundred screw, a, a, a bunch of, maybe limit it to like 50 people or something like that. But do like a hundred inch TV where the face yeah. of somebody is, you know. Yeah, or maybe different size of TVs. Maybe a, kind of a mix up. Like, instead of having different fans, they've had to hold those TVs and you'd see the match going on. Like, I think it would be a, a cool too. So that brings up a good question. Anybody that knows your career, and we talked about it in our past episodes, you competed in the inaugural Brawl for All. We've seen WWE has basically resurrected that with (laughs) Raw Underground, uh, just in a more trumped-up version. So first of all, have you seen any of that? And if so, what do you think about it? (laughs) I've seen uh, the new faction. What's their name again? Dressed uh, up in the, black. The retribution. Retribution. I've seen them a little bit. I I, I can't watch a full show. I oh, I me too, dude. I can't that. either. I go through. I just skip back and forth. Uh, I don't watch much TV usually, uh, but I do sometimes, uh, especially when I'm at Destro's house when we train, and I'm there. Uh, then I watch them. Um, but, uh, Have you seen any of that Raw Underground thing? And do you think it's a ripoff for the Brawl for All? That's what I, I – I haven't watched it, but I've heard it's a ripoff of Brawl for All, though. I, I they got, like, like, this was... door where you got to walk in. It's like Fight Club. And then they walk in, and they got, like, the – they got the ring, but there's no ropes or nothing. And they I think that's, their... um, that's a little bit the idea of uh, uh, the Josh Barnett. Uh, yep. Bloodsport. Yeah. Blood sport, yeah. I think the idea might be coming from there. I'm not sure, but I think they've been doing that. They started with Matt Riddle, and then it's Josh Barnett, Blood Sport, and then before yep. the first the first year was the Matt Riddle. Yeah, and, and then it, Barnett it, had it. We it, had Lindsey Snow on for that. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're doing great. They're doing great with that. that yeah, show. I'm a big fan of that stuff because he's even had guys like Phil Baroni has fought in that. Obviously, Josh Barnett's been in there. You, Corey, that's the one that I was trying to get you to watch because it's got a lot of, like, Phil Baroni's fought in there. A lot of guys from old-style old, old style yeah. UFC have been in there as well. Yeah, so, I've that's a, definitely Dan, a good one. Don Severn, I think. Yep, Dan Severn as well. I, I believe Severn was in there too. So, now as, you know, now as we're, you know, starting to make our way out, like you said, more shows are starting to open up. You know, you mentioned Brody wrestling over there uh, in New Japan. Do you want to make your way over to New Japan now? Or are you able to, go, to with your Ring of Honor? I was, I was booked for uh, the uh, 
can't remember the name of that tournament. Just before G1 Climax. Uh, yeah, G1 Climax tag team. Me and Brody, we were booked there to be part of that uh, tournament, the tag team tournament, just before mm -hmm. Christmas. Yep. And Brody uh, tore his ACL on one of his legs. I think the right. I'm not sure which one it was. So he tore the, the ACL, so he needed like two and a half, three months off with the stem cells and things like that. So, uh, which is a quick recovery compared to before. An ACL was like eight, eight months, six to eight months. Now all three months. So I think, uh, but it was just enough so that, <laughs> so that we missed the, the, the injury just happened before, like 10 days before we were supposed to leave for Japan. It was just before the final battle date. I was supposed to be there from December 10 or 13 to the, uh, no, the November 20, November 20th to December 13th. Something. Right. I was supposed to be there in Japan. I was booked there. I had my flight tickets. I had like my passport for Japan. Like I was ready to go. And Do you think boom, you'll go over boom. there now that you're doing singles? I'll, I'll, I never say never. I, I, I really don't know. Um, I think it's it'd be a hell of a character for Japan. I think they would. Dude, it would be awesome in Japan. Yeah, because they're a big fan of monsters and things like that. Right. So, uh, Godzilla or whatever. And Could I you imagine that, if somehow they yeah. brought you out on like Wrestle Kingdom or something like that and you did an entrance like you did at Madison Square Garden well, in the fucking Tokyo Dome? Yeah, it'd be fucking crazy. <laughs> Yeah, that would be insane. Yeah, I'm just saying that would be insane. So let me let me throw a couple of hypotheticals out at you. So Corey was asking me because he was looking into your character and things, and it spawned a couple questions for me. So obviously we know now that over there in AEW you had uh, the Dark Order, and it ended up being Brody Lee um, as the leader over there. Yeah. Obviously, I knew you were signed with Ring of Honor, but dude. PCO would be an interesting uh, pick with the Dark Order as well, man. I just yeah. I've, I've been seeing in hypotheticals and stuff like that, man. What do you think? Uh, what do you think with all these cinematic matches? Do you think that it's kind of opening up the door for there to be more room for more character stuff again? I think I think uh, uh, people like his characters. I mean, I agree. When it's not when it's not forced, when it's not something. Uh, that doesn't suit someone when it seems or natural as a character. Yeah. 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 When it seems like it's really part of the guy, it really, you know, stick on him and you could really tell, okay, he's not playing something and that's him. You know, I think it works out. Like, I think the crowd likes that. Uh, and I think it's, uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, for certain guys, because like Corey said, you know, the, uh, Business has changed to what it was when that huge, huge characters like the World Warriors or you know uh, all of that era where you know everybody had a character like uh, yeah yeah the like police. the Freebirds yeah <laughs> oh, yeah even yeah. speaking of them we just interviewed Miranda Gordy last week oh yeah okay. yeah she came on you were talking about uh, shows running um, they contacted us from we got in touch with the people from Texas they just did uh, the independent wrestling expo down there oh okay yeah it's... she we had her and uh, Sam Adonis came on last week for that oh cool 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 yeah but yes. they're starting to run that but they're big characters yeah yeah and I think uh, it's uh, I think it's going to be uh, a percentage of a wrestling company but I think there's uh there's a lot of room for that uh, if it if it's working if it's getting over I think yeah I think it's going to be cool I think it's going to we're right. going to see a little bit more so have and in Canada my question is how much are we seeing have you seen much as far as uh wrestling shows in Canada yet yeah it was uh, it just got opened up today it was, uh, you can wrestle someone else. It was like, it was banned. Wrestling, boxing, everything just got reopened today. So, and I think the crowd's going to be 250 max for any crowd right now in, in Quebec. So, uh, which is the Montreal area. And uh, there's tons of wrestling companies there. So, uh, 
they were all starving and they were all re ready to go. So um, we'll see how it goes. With that. How big, how, uh, how much of a lockdown did you guys go on in Canada? Cause I know here in Michigan, we had like, we were locked down. I would say, what would you say, Corey, maybe like a month or two to where it was like real strict. And now like little bit by little bit, they're starting to kind of like, release stuff one by I one say, i would say it was further than that i would say we were closer to probably like two and a half months where it got real i mean uh i know when i got my temporary layoff and stuff from work i mean we didn't end up getting the call back that was like a two-month turnaround yeah i think march april and uh, may march april may uh yeah and June, yeah, well, probably three months at least. Uh, well, it's been six months now, almost. Yeah, about that. Yeah, so, it started in about April, March, yeah. April. Yeah, I think the first two months were pretty straight, like business closed and things like that. Like the bars were closed and the restaurant was just uh, uh, the takeout and uh, delivery. And yeah, there's a lot of business that got a. Uh, got hurt that are closing doors and things like that. So um, it's it's a mess uh, for the economy, I think, but uh, for, for a lot of people. But um, yeah, now they're, for the last two, three months, they've been like releasing like different, like bars were the last one. Uh, boxing and wrestling has been the last one and the school just reopened like uh, last week. And it's a big, uh, it's hard for them to keep the, <laughs> the students under control. They don't have the social distancing. They don't wear the mask. They don't, I mean, they don't care, basically. <laughs> it's yeah. like you, what you see on the news is pretty, uh, it's, it's, it's like uh, they're losing the control. But they say they're going to send some agents to the school now, like uh, government <laughs> agents, to just watch out and make sure. <laughs> it's a... Uh, you're gonna get, you're gonna get, you better put your damn mask on, kid. You're gonna get this because you didn't have your mask on. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a big show in itself, like the plexiglass all over the place and everybody with a mask. We, we never expected that. So it's it's weird to see the world going around like this. But uh, I think by January, we should be okay. We should be all right to go, I would say. Hopefully, they'll come out with if not a vaccine, maybe a, a treatment that's going to lower the chances or something. I don't know how it's going to pan uh, work out or how, what's going to happen, but I, I, I'm pretty sure like everybody wants to restart for January for sure, full time, uh, hopefully. Yeah. I, I'm sure hoping so myself. I know everybody I can imagine is ready to get this year behind us and kind of oh. just start on a new leaf. Yeah, yeah. King Slate. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, I'm hoping like, uh, yeah, we can get a good uh, end of the year, 2020 and 2021. Hopefully, it's gonna you now start like strong. Like I was I'm expecting after Christmas, I'm expecting like the people to be ready for see some, you know, some entertainment and movies and wrestling and all kinds of stuff that they haven't done. In a while, and I don't know what's the plan like for the big production in Hollywood. Would you release a movie when you can only have like half a, you know, if you if you launch like let's say a big uh, blockbuster and you have only a quarter of your room for watching a, a film or something? I don't think if you would launch like a Fast and Furious Ten with this yeah. pandemic you know they, they, I, I know i know with my kids like they you know they did it with kids movies like the trolls movies and stuff like that they did those right. released during quarantine but yeah I think that's a whole different that's a different yeah. scenario you that's know, a small uh, small budget like production most of the uh yeah. Most comedy yeah yeah man uh, it, one once once they spend a hundred millions on a movie i don't think they want like uh half of the room or a quarter of the room, you know? I think they want everybody to be, you know, they want to sell out. Well, then, 
on top of that, what are they going to do when they run out of content? Because I can't imagine, I mean, are they going to start releasing stuff from five years ago that just never got the green light? You know, is that what's yeah. going to end up being the new normal, essentially, is older content? And what it creates, too, you have to, maybe you never thought about it. I don't know if it's like that in Michigan, but in Montreal, the downtown is dead. Because everybody's like doing tele, you know, tele travel. You know, they're working on their phone or all that's empty. So Not in every business downtown. <laughs> well, nobody goes across the bridge there anymore. So uh, I went, and uh, no traffic. Everything is like dead. So it's a, if you're working in an office that costs, I don't know how much for your boss or something, and then you're only working two days out of five or three out of five, would your boss keep on renting those offices for their employees? Or are they gonna go, okay, now everybody works from home? You know, because I don't know what they're expecting for the future. So uh, I think they want to be more green for, you know, the ecology, you know, like, so, because oh, because it did like I think it was good for the planet in a way because it gives the planet a rest because the pollution so. point. absolutely the pollution and all that so now it, it I think it's it's gonna be a little change I think we're shifting a little bit going another direction so. Another thing that we've seen, you know, one other thing I wanted to get your thoughts on. So another thing that we've seen rise up during the pandemic is an uh, old friend of yours, uh, Mr. Joey Janela has been doing his thing over there with GCW with their shows. You know, they've been doing their thing on Fight TV and things like that. Like, yeah. what are your thoughts on these shows that we've been seeing? Obviously, it's like a different look, but I mean, they're still getting people watching it. I mean... Could we see PCO that, on another GC, uh, GCW card? I told you, like a lot of people have been calling me lately for, for different shows. So who knows, you know, but, you know, one thing, Ring of Honor has been like more than like fair with their entire roster. We had been like getting paid the full pay during the whole crisis. So, so. I don't know, unless they would say, yeah, we want our guys not to lose their edge and things like that. And they would allow us without any feeling like any, right. that we haven't like, that we're so loyal to, to the company because mm -hmm. we're under contract anyway. So it's, it's something that it's a very sensitive point, but maybe sure. they, they would want the guys to be busy a little bit, but Another way, maybe they're feeling like they're they're doing the bubbles, and you know we're so we're so much on their on on our on the health issues and things like that. You know, uh, they don't. Everybody want to got tested one after once the show was done. Like it was like a, a minimal roster. It was just the sixteen guys. They were all in the near area by, so not too many guys were flying in and out of Baltimore, a lot of drive-ins and everybody got tested when they went back after their quarantine or during their quarantine when they went back home. So I don't know if they would want us to be, uh, I get uh, it. I get what so you're trying to so say. So cowboy and, 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 you know, and going for like, this is the CGCW yep. and maybe not taking care enough of ourselves when they've been taking care of us. Like, it totally makes sense. I get totally. it. I just wondered what your thoughts were because I knew you had your ties with Joey and uh, all. Yeah, I'm in tight with Joey. It's a good friend of mine. I mean, I, I think he's 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 awesome, man. I mean, he's uh, he's he's a he works hard. You know, he he's, he's unbelievable for for the business. Um, and I would love you know to be part of uh, GCW at times, uh, but. You know, my main concern. Your main deal is Ring of Honor as it should yeah, be. Yeah, because it's a first-class company. I mean, and if you don't run, it's because you don't want to take risk. Because, you know, that you don't know that too, but uh, we were we were going to be live, you know, on and, and going live starting in June. And that, that kind of put all 
things uh, on the side track, you know. So, but I think uh, they just, we are like, is the company going to, because I don't feel like, because I'm not in the process, I'm not in the office, so I don't mm -hmm. know, you know, I'd say we are preparing for next year for sure. Uh, we are preparing for next show, but I think next year is going to be the big, big time, you know, it's, it's time to regroup right now. It's time to evolve like on different platform, on their social media platform, on, you know, the YouTube channels and this and that and get all areas of the business ready. So when everything starts with a big, they can be ready to kick, go. Yeah. Ready to go. And yeah. I've well, like you said, that. I think it's a good restart for wrestling as a whole, right? Like, I mean, if you think about it, even the main companies, even though AEW and WWE are still running, you know, with, the gradual start to fans coming back. I mean, you got to imagine all the major companies are trying to make an impact. I mean, hell, look at what Impact did. They went and signed all like all those guys that left from WWE yeah. to try to make a thing there. I mean, I think it's a perfect opportunity for uh, Ring of Honor, you know, to kind of insert themselves right back in. Yeah, we haven't been part of the the race of the uh, the independent like. Uh, guys that became independent, you know, that was, uh, just say, moved on for, for yeah. main rosters and things like that for WWE or AEW. But, um, and we haven't been, like, competing competing with, uh, with other companies, like, to get certain guys. Because uh, I think uh, we, Ring of Honor, we, uh, we, kind of had everything set up for 2020, 2021. So the, you know, it had put a lot of monies on a lot of money on, on different uh, guys and different uh, ready to go live on TV and uh, that got postponed. So uh, we'll see how it goes, but I, I, I get it. Why compete when it's not time to compete? You know, everybody will be available still next year. You know, it's not like, no. I just mean it gets gives them an opportunity, like you said, to get themselves ready. And then when fans are able to come back, it's a good way for Ring of Honor to just reinsert their name, you know, right up there with an impact yeah. in AEW. You know, yeah. I just think it's a good chance at a reset. And as we kind of wind down here, you know, first of all, I didn't get to tell you this after your last uh after our last interview. Um, shout out on the Chris Van Vliet interview. He was right. He was a guest on our show as well. Oh, was yeah. Great, yeah, yeah. He was a guest on our show literally like I think a week before you did uh, – a week yeah. before you guys did your interview. So it was cool, man. Like like I said, it's been cool to have you on shows like this and shows like his where people are starting to kind of get to see, you know, a little bit behind the character a little bit. Yeah. So uh, it was definitely it was definitely a cool look. So, like I said, as we go into, uh, you know, as we go back in and Ring of Honor uh, goes back to TV, um, I'm going to give you the floor here, man. If you've got any last words for your opponents or any of the guys in Ring of Honor or for the fans, let them know and let them know where they can find you. Well, uh, PCO to French Canadian Frankenstein, and uh, you can find me on the social medias, uh, on YouTube at Pierre Carvalho at PCO or at PCO is not human on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm, I'm mostly on Twitter and Facebook. Hey man, we appreciate well, your time. Over. We appreciate your time as always, man. It's good to finally get to link up with you. I know we've tried to set this up like two or three times, whether it be in Dearborn for Ring of Honor. Well, you know, pandemic is good for this. You know, right. we didn't you know have a problem. I mean? Like we're all sitting at the crib good. chilling. And now yeah. I get to return the favor. You sent us these great shirts, which yeah, you can yeah. get at Pro Thanks, Wrestling man. Tees. And look there, the first ever yeah. knockouts and three count shirt is coming at you. And all the right. French Canadian Frankenstein might just have him one on the way. But, uh, we appreciate your time, man. And if any of you guys aren't checking them out, if you're like me and aren't able to see them on your regular TV networks, man, you can always check out Ring of Honor on the Fight TV app. Like I said, you're going to you're gonna miss great action if you're not watching Ring of Honor. Check out PCO. Check out past guests of the show, Shane Taylor. You've got Jay Lethal. You've got all the great stars of Ring of Honor. Like I said, you need to be checking them out. And in the in-between team, until next time, thank you for your time and peace. Thanks, Scott.